Hello, today uh, we are at Gordon Biersch. Uh Luckily these guys were nice enough to put up with me. Um, like I said before, guys, I'm just a nobody trying to be a somebody, so I appreciate your patience. Uh, you had said something a second ago about where the name Gordon Beers comes from. Could you it tell me the, about that? Yeah, it was the founders, Dan Gordon and Gene Beers. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Gordon was the brewer, Gene Beers was the chef. Mm -hmm. They started a brew pub in Palo Alto, California. We was in Palo Alto, I'll wrap that mouth. And uh, it grew up, and it kind of got moved around, bought out. Uh, Dean Beers, I think, still has a restaurant. And uh, Dan Gordon is now running the Gordon Beers uh, Manufacturing mm -hmm. in uh, mm -hmm. California, which, just look at the numbers, looks like they had a pretty good year. Oh, okay. He's Excellent. doing fine. But they don't actually affiliate directly with the company. We're mm -hmm. now owned by some big conglomerate. So this is Nicholas Landers, and what is your title, Nick? Uh, Yeast Wrangler. Yeast Wrangler? Yes. That is fantastic. I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> and uh, Arnie, what is your uh, what's your title? What do you do here, my friend? I am Nick's assistant. Nick's assistant. He is the uh, uh, alternate yeast wrangler. Okay, <laughs> that's what he does. I'm alt mover. Yes. Uh, Arnie served in the Marines. Thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, and uh, it's got a very German flavor here. Is that? I'm but, assuming uh, that's intentional. Dan, yeah, Dan Gordon started out as very intentionally German style. Like his beers, he wanted more German style beers. Mm -hmm. He never really got to like the IPA craze, things mm -hmm. like that. When I first started here, I wasn't technically allowed to make an IPA. Though my boss did say that if we are making a beer, we have a bucket of hops and we're walking past a fermenter and we slip, and all the hops fall into the fermenter, what are you going to do? <laughs> Can't what are you going to do? That. You can't right. throw it out. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, I like that. I like that. I, I love a yeast triangle, by the way, too. I should, should have probably already known that. Um, so, I know, Nick, you had said you started in, uh, did you say you started in Chicago? Where did you say you started at? Well, I, uh, I, lived, I was living in Chicago about, I don't know, 14, 15 years ago, and my roommate and I started homebrewing. And the uh, first couple batches were god awful terrible. And uh, we actually took a batch that we knew was bad to a homebrew club meeting. We were like, hey, can you guys tell us what's wrong? And someone was like, oh, this is terrible. Like, yeah, we know. He's like, do you have any more? Like, no, we dumped it out. We just have the six pack. He's like, ah, oh. I want you like, I want to have more so I can show people like what beer goes bad, what's the best taste like. Right. Like, uh -huh. But uh, then we eventually started getting a little better at it. And uh, I saved up a bunch of money to go to World Cup South Africa with some friends. They all dipped out. So I spent all the money on beer school instead. And then started working around a few places. Mm -hmm. uh, Flossmoor Station, Schlafly, uh, Flossmoor Station, Chicago, Schlafly, St. Louis. Uh, did most of my time up in Lakefront, Milwaukee as the night brewer. Mm -hmm. And came here about eight and a half years ago. Eight and a half years and ago. They have not fired me yet. Yeah. So that's kind of your origin story, I guess you would say. I guess that's how, how I started. started. Into it all. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Arnie? How did you get into it? So I want to say about five months ago, Nick uh, approached me and asked me, you know, what do you think about learning how to brew? And as soon as he said, I was just like, I'm all for it. Why would I not want to do that? I'm already a sous chef. I'm also a mixologist. So learning how to make beer would be like, you know. You're the for real renaissance man. I mean, if you tell me you were a black belt taekwondo, you, you, you would, and a pilot or something, <laughs> you really fit right in. <laughs> yeah, he had an assistant for a little while, and then she went on to a different things and I just started showing up and I've been showing up ever since. <laughs> he's keep showing up, he's teaching me and I'm loving it. Fantastic, fantastic man. Um, do you have, uh, I can ask either one of you or both of you, I mean, do you have a, is there such a thing, do you have like a beer philosophy? I'll ask everybody this, this. I mean, I kind of have one but it, I mean, what is your beer, is there a thing, do you have one? I guess a philosophy is when you're a professional is to make money. And so, it's, if you're not making money, you're not going to have a I, that's, I appreciate that candor, actually. And uh, yeah. so, and my crowd here is very transient. Like, we don't know who's going to show up. Lots of conventions. Random people will have country concerts. Just some of those random things all the time. So I basically just try to make a beer, like a wide spectrum of beers. Because I may not make a beer for everybody, but I will make, well, not every beer is for everybody, I think, mm -hmm. but I will have a beer. I get you. Because you, you don't beer, know. You'll find a beer that you'll like. 
Right, because you might have a country concert, and they're going to be very different than, I don't know, uh, uh, the Bankers Convention mm -hmm. from Manhattan, I'm assuming. I don't know, that's a very good... No, yeah. That, no, that, no, makes, that's, that's that makes sense. Yeah, they're probably going to be pretty different tastes, right? Yeah. 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 Or teachers. One's very <laughs> sophisticated. <laughs> right, so they might have different tastes, like, you know, your country folks all come in looking for their Coors Light, and we tell them we don't we don't have it. Right. And nine times out of ten, we give them our yellow fizzy gold and export, and they're like, oh, I'll that, I'll drink that. <laughs> and so, they'll be fine. Hot off with the axe. Yeah, so, <laughs> with the axe. Well, that's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that I'll have another one of them. I don't yeah. know about that craft beer. Let's just try it. Buddy. Just and nine times out of ten, they're fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you'll have some people that don't really like your traditional lager beers, but we'll have a half of ice cream. And then they'll just go crazy for apple bites. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is better than Blue Moon. <laughs> I get more slice. I always uh, had a buddy that kind of, I was always kind of one of the Bud Light guys. Didn't realize what I was missing. And I had a buddy that started pushing these IPAs on me. And at first it was a little overwhelming, you know. But oh, yeah. once you realize how complex the flavors are, like, oh, wow, that's a lot going on there. And then you can't pour them down your throat like you can Bud Lights either. That's a, a, it's a vital mistake. <laughs> <laughs> say, uh, <laughs> like yeah. the, the people that only drink Bud Light are the real beer snobs. Because they only drink <laughs> yes. beer. Yes, I, and I wrote an article about that. Two different kinds of beer snobs. The Bud Light only yeah. and the never Bud Light. Yeah. And the Bud Light only are the worst. I mean, they're making fun of everybody as they make 17 trips to the bathroom. I mean, the only flavor that's been added to the beer is the... What's ever on their hands after they come out of the bathroom? Nice. <laughs> nice. 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 And, uh, uh, anyway, uh, last question. I mean, I don't. You guys look like you're in a great location. You've got some space here. Um, I mean, either personally or as far as the business. What are your kind of uh, well, future that's, plans? That's things above our head for this place. No, they are supposed to be getting me a keg washer. Been eight and a half years. Finally, get my keg washer. <laughs> Uh, should be supposed to arrive in the next month, and then I can actually have a lot more fun because I'll have kegs all the time. Right. And uh, I've got some barrels that I really want to play around with in the pack. Uh -huh. uh, have some Belgian doubles that are in some mm -hmm. barrels that've been there for two years. I could have a chance to finally pull out, play around with, uh, and at least have more beers on tap here. Now, expansion with the restaurant. I that's the company. That's and, beyond uh, your yeah. right. Okay, well, let me ask, because I'm here about the beer. The restaurant's great, and I'll mention it because it benefits you guys. I mean, the way I look at that, it, it, in this sense, if it, if it benefits me, it, if it benefits you, it indirectly benefits me, and the restaurant indirect, indirectly benefits you. So. Oh, yeah, especially the effect they use on Merton to uh, make quite a few things here. Yeah, yeah, the money made there funds what you got going on over there. But, uh, yeah, it's more the other way around. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay, I didn't think about that. You're right. All right. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I guess it would. Wouldn't it? Anyway, uh, it's a, the goal is to make money. Uh, what about the future of beer then? Do you have any conclusions uh, about where things are going? Do you think it's going to get... Because this craft beer explosion has been fairly recent. I mean... Uh, well, there's been multiple craft beers. Okay. Yeah, like the initial one. Like in the late 90s, early, or I mean early, or late 80s, early 90s. They kind of plateaued around the late 90s. Then around the mid-2000s, it blew up again. It was going off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about the, you know, 10 years later, about mid, like 2018 or so, it kind of plateaued again. Mm -hmm. And now, it's again, everything's opened back up. And it's mm -hmm. to right. Again. Well, I love your place, and I appreciate you guys putting up with me, man. Do you have any events coming up or anything you want to... Plug. I mean, do you, do you got anything you got going on you want to plug or anything you want to talk uh, about? So, uh, having some fun with beer. Got Berliner Weiss on now. Uh, nice tart, 3.2%. Delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking right now. Uh, doing a honey lager where I'm getting some honey from a local meat maker from uh, the Joel over at Hive and Barrel. Uh -huh. Growing that up in two weeks. So, I'll have that coming up here at the end of July. Uh, then, of course, coming up onto Oktoberfest season. And uh, you guys for a lot of Oktoberfest. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you guys giving me the time to do this, man. I really appreciate it. And if there's anything ever I can do for you, please let me know. Cheers, Rick. Thank you.